Hey, it's Chris. We're talking Keep the Heroes Out today. We're talking also the latest expansion, Boss Battles. What is that adding? How is it new and different? If you're not familiar with this sort of reverse tower defense style game where you are the monsters guarding your treasure, trying to keep those bad, bad heroes from stealing it in the first place. Asymmetric, a little bit of everything. Cooperative, is it a heck of a lot of fun? Yes. Why? Let's go. So what I've got set up here in front of me is just like a random, I just made it up layout for the essential portion of this video to show you what exactly is going on with this game. As I mentioned, you take on the role of one of the various asymmetric baddies, the monsters in the first place. So in this case, I have a dragon here, I have some wizards, and I have a little jigglypuff, if you will. <laughs> but what you've got going on here on a turn-by-turn -turn basis is you've got action mitigation in the form of a slight deck build, if you will. Each of these monsters starts off with 10 unique asymmetric cards that are going to give you their actions along the bottom that you are going to utilize five each turn, like a normal deck build situation that you're used to, play your cards and then, you know, rinse and repeat. And then the good guys are going to invade various parts of your dungeon in the first place in order to slowly take it over, capture the treasure, make their way to the treasure room to get the ultimate one in order to either win or lose. And this is not necessarily a I win game. This is I survived until the end game style of cooperative. Because at the beginning of the game, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be setting up treasures in all of the various rooms that are available to you until you get the four treasure as well. And that four treasure is going to be a special treasure because that is the one that if the bad guys or the good guys in this case get down here in the treasure room, then they win. How they win on a turn-by-turn -turn basis is it's a very similar cooperative style that you're maybe used to. I draw my five cards up, I have them in my hand, I utilize the actions at the bottom of the card, in either or in this case, and a ranged attack, an activate, a move, a melee attack, or an activate, move melee, activate, again, move melee, activate, and then also either activate in that area, respawn if you will, or two moves. And so then I have all of these available on my turn to be able to use to any extent that I want. And then when my turn is done, you then proceed with drawing from the good guy deck, if you will. And this good guy deck is going to vary because this base game alone comes with 20 freaking scenarios that you can run through. With the expansion included, it gives you 23 different up to monsters with asymmetry in terms of their decks and their abilities and their interactions. Is that enough for you? Yeah, it's freaking metric ton. But essentially on the good guys turn, the good guys, you flip one of these cards over if it's round one, round two, or depending on what difficulty you're playing at, it may be more than one card. And you see that it tells you not only what the ability of the magician is down here in the corner, that if they get you know placed in the jail cell, they spring anybody else there, but then also you place two of them in the tiles whose symbol matches this. And so for example, you can see that that matches here. So I would place one of these wizards in each of the tiles. So then when you do so, that's when everything else sort of gets triggered. The wizard gets triggering everything else that may be there. So if you have old heroes that may be there, they get reactivated if you haven't taken them out. They also do some total damage to your bad guys that are sitting there because your bad guys also have a certain amount of health, as well as this card telling you one, where they spawn, their special ability of interaction, how much card is in their deck, and then also how many of them are there are total. So some of these characters, for example, the wizard, there are two of them total, and two of them start on the board the dragon only has one some of these other ones have like 10 total pieces but maybe you only have four on the board so it's going to give you ways of manipulating the spatial arrangement but they're going to be super weak the dragon has 10 health and his special ability can heal himself well these little puff balls only have one health and if they end up in a room with a hero that's not taken out well they're just immediately off the board they can respawn a ton but it's sort of that dynamic you're getting with the asymmetry did i mention you can play as cthulhu Ooh, there's also our unicorn who has rainbow poop in the new expansion. Yeah, I can't make this stuff up, but it's freaking sweet, right? Now, if there are no monsters there and you have heroes that outnumber the chest that is present there, this chest gets flipped over, bad stuff happens, so the good guys will get to go again, and then they make their way towards the treasure room in this sense, and then you're gonna be slowly accumulating them and you rinse and repeat, so it has a snowballing effect, so you cannot let that happen. 
you have to take them out on your turn. This is a game that rewards aggressiveness because the biggest blessing curse of this is that it can snowball in your favor, it can snowball out of control and you can lose very quickly because therein goes to the difficulty, right? You play through two rounds. Well, essentially all you do is you have this deck of all four of the regular characters. The boss battle expansion actually adds rookies, but then depending on the scenario, there's a whole nother deck of cards over here that is going to offer different abilities for uh, good guys, good guys that will show up, but then a whole smattering of other abilities that they're going to affect depending on what scenario, what level, how strong they are, what exactly you're doing. So normally in this game, you go through this full deck once. And when you do that, then round two occurs. If you make it through round two of going through this whole stack again, you win. Boss battle expansion adds a boss tromping onto the battlefield, sometimes aiding your favor, sometimes taking out the good guys for you, sometimes destroying anything its path, and sometimes just taking you out in the process or particularly targeting you because you upset them. New dynamics, new tokens on the board that you're gonna be manipulating, all sorts of crazy things. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the new boss expansion right here in front of me literally doubles the amount of villains or monsters that you have available to you. And they are not just reskins, they are re- imaginings of different mechanics that you can get in a relatively move attack style game and what i love about this game is that it just freaking takes the same sort of thing that marvel united does right it gives you these very simple mechanisms and it manipulates them in such a way to make them so clever to make you feel clever now, along the way, again, I have another deck of cards sitting right here in front of me. This is your loot deck. Now, the loot deck here, you can see that they all have a little bit of different symbology at the bottom, better ones, and when you acquire them, just like a regular deck builder, you put them in your discard pile, and so then when you run out, you reshuffle and you redraw, but then they also have symbology in the upper right-hand corner, and that's how you're acquiring them, because this game, as I mentioned, is a little bit of resource management in the sense that uh, these tiles in the first place will have the ability to manipulate resources to then be converted into in this case uh, a potion that I can get that may be out in the marketplace up here in the first place which allows me to then search the top three cards of my deck and put any in my hand that have a melee attack in them in the first place and so again you have scrolls you have weapons you have all of these things that are going to get manipulated and these are all asymmetric so this is a huge pile of cards that's going to give you a different dynamic and how they interact with the player characters that you have. So emphasizing the strengths or potentially, you know, picking up for the weaknesses that, you know, maybe the wizard has, even though he can teleport, he doesn't have a lot of attack. So I'm adding attack cards from there. Or the dragon is now getting a ton more movement because he has a ton of attack, but, you know, doesn't have the other. So those are the dynamics that you're able to mitigate with this. And again, the expansion is just giving you more because what the expansion is doing here is not just giving you more of one thing. It's more giving you more of all of the good things. And you may blessing or curse feel about it the way you do with a lot of campaign games, right? In this game, you have them all unlocked, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. There's a couple more in the box that I didn't even get to, right? But you get the point is that each of these scenarios allows for you to play them individually. You do not have to campaign link them together. You can play whatever you want. You know what? If you want to, you could just say, screw it. And I want to play with the cave ogre. I want to play with the vampire lord because his powers are freaking sweet. I want to play with the giant jelly because it's doing something that I've never seen before. And you can, or you can take it as a challenge in order to unlock that character in the first place. A la your Super Smash Brothers, if you will, or your Mario Karts, I have to beat them. A la your Mortal Kombat's. Uh, you, I just have to beat them in order to gain them. And that's rewarding, right? You get to see their mechanics because again, the mechanics aren't exactly all the same if you're fighting them versus if you are playing as them, which again, creates a great dynamic of it's not just the samesies back and forth. Now, you may be going, okay, Chris, well, if the bad guys, the monsters, the good guys, whatever you want to call them, are getting power creep in the expansion, and it's not totally power creep, it's just more creativity, we'll say, are the difficulties in terms of the heroes, which can also be done not only as those lovely little cardboard tokens that you can see there, but also as your own little unique meeples here, too, Yes, they get power-ups as well. More charging, more strengthening, more abilities, more difficulty taking them out. I mentioned, you know, if this guy gets thrown in the cells, he unlocks them all. She immediately, uh, you know, does a damage to an adjacent area. The rogue takes out any traps that they were placed initially that might be stopping those heroes from even doing damage in the first place. 
and rinse and repeat. Again, it's a tile-based configuration. The scenarios are laid out for you. Mix, match, they're all different. The arrangements are all different. You can use portals. You can you know, teleport around. You can move as quickly or as slowly as you want. It's room adjacent. It is modular in the sense that these rooms matter. These tiles have to have doors connecting them. So you can see that certain places you can go and some places you can't. And so how you manipulate that element of things as well is a very, very important part. Let me be very clear about this. If you like this original game, the boss expansion takes it to the next level. It makes it better. It makes it Cthulhu-esque die, if you will, of just the craziness that's going to go on with the chaos of adding one of these bosses in a good way. Because you're going, the good guys are going, and the boss is going. And how that dynamic interacts, it's not too much. Because truth be told, at times, there's so much going on in this map in terms of the icons, the resources, the creatures, the upkeep. Some of that does get a little overwhelming when you have these guys landing and, you know, flipping and reflipping. Oh, they didn't get killed. So then you're all getting flipped face down for the next turn and they're going to be available. And which ones? There is that potential. But the bosses just work. I mean, it, it takes it to a little bit of a more strategic game without losing the crazy chaos and just the overall fun factor that I haven't had in a lot of other games as a whole. My biggest criticism of a lot of campaign games is when I have these things, right? I have these unlocks. I go, I want the cool stuff. I don't wanna have to play 17 scenarios in order to get this one, that's the one I'm desiring. So you know what? If you just wanna play one of these scenarios as a one-off, you can. If you wanna just compatibility-wise play it with stuff from the base game, you can. You don't have to play that scenario. It's a complete mix match however you so choose. And that is not unappreciated. That is making me freaking ecstatic because you just pick and go. It's more like Spirit Island in that sense where I can pick a spirit from any one of these and I can pick a scenario from any one of these. It just incorporates, flows so smoothly and there's no worry about compatibility. So who's not gonna like this? What are some cons in this game? You know, I've got the hero deck, right? With this hero deck right here, all these cards. When you're playing these one by one on the easy mode, right? Because there's an easy mode, there's a family mode, so you can customize it, you know? And so when you're playing these one by one and only one per turn, it's relatively straightforward and manageable, but it becomes a little bit long in the tooth the higher player counts, there is significant downtime because like I said, you're playing five of these cards from your hand and how and which order and what you wanna do, if you've got a little analysis paralysis or you've got people that aren't gonna be snappy about this, uh, you know, from a tactically based situation because the board state is going to be dramatically different between the time you go and two or three other players go in between you and your next turn, that's going to be the biggest downside. And to be honest with you, when people say it's going to take you, you know, 40 minutes per scenario with this, it's not. It's going to take you a lot longer, especially the first couple games. And once you go playing two at a time, yeah, it speeds things up, but the difficulty is much harder. And that's where the, you know, deceptive nature of this game is it looks really cute don't be fooled it's one of the harder cooperative games in my collection this is easily harder than pandemic anything right this isn't as hard as say as something like spirit island and it's more achievable than something like ghost stories or that ilk it really gives you a fair chance to do so it is not overwhelming but like some of those games when things snowball things snowball and it's a runaway leader well not really leader, but side situation potentially, whether or not you enjoy that. But I mean, again, a lot of cooperative games end up that way eventually, either when you're way ahead or you're just not anywhere close. And so it's not dramatically different in that way, shape or form. You're also not gonna like this if you just don't like deck building, right? This is at its core a deck builder and you're gonna have to also resource management because you've got several different resources down here that you're managing. You've got your coins, you've got your bones, you've got your frogs, you've got all of those things that you're gonna be having to move around with you because you can only carry one token with you if that's a trap or a resource from one room to the next as you move. And so the places that you may need to get to are on one side, the places that you may be getting the resources are on the other. And so it may be a little bit of a slog and that's why, personally speaking, I love the sorcerers because then I can teleport, <laughs> right? But that's going to be prohibitive in terms of getting some of these cards in the first place because the other aspect of this is, although there is a market available with these cards, if you just don't have some of the right ones up, yeah, your turn kind of is lesser because after you use all your cards, you can discard one that is kept at the end of your turn to recycle the market, which is really freaking good but you can only do it at the end of your turn. 
which again makes sense. It increases the difficulty and makes this game deceptively more difficult than it actually appears on first glance. And I say that as a good thing, right? Uh, yes, as a deck driven, asymmetric, some shuffling style of things, occasionally you're just gonna get screwed. But this game isn't that much of a burden to set up, tear down, or reset that it really makes you more frustrated. You just go, ah, oh, man, we got outplayed by a game randomly, right? And that happens, and that's okay. But if that's not for you, this game isn't going to change your opinion. Here is an example of what the boss battles expansions look like in terms of the content. So on one page, you have basically the setup and what's going to be going on. I mentioned the rookie cards, which are just ones that don't have an ability, but they just get summoned and they allow you to essentially uh, refresh the other heroes that are down there. That's the one other big change. And then there's skull rooms as well here. That skull rooms are going to be where the guardians can come out the guardians get additional setup as i mentioned and then the vortex as well allows you to destroy one of your tactics cards which i mean again is winnowing which is a great feature in a deck building game when you start wanting to get to those more important cards all the quicker but in this game you also have to be careful because if you destroy the ones that summon your creatures back onto the table after you get knocked out well, then you also might be screwed. And then there's also going to be the mix and match availability, but quick spoilers here if you wanna see what this looks like. For example, you can start to see what the new overlords look like, how their abilities are gonna be sort of interacting, or you can go straight to the new scenarios here. As the scenario shows you the setup, it shows you the special rules that might be taking in place of here, which again is like a two-liner, easy, easy modification. When you get to round two, you flip to the next page, it tells you what's happening with the boss and what happens if you do what's needed down here in the A section for the A deck that you're gonna be revealing. And then again, it goes over to the Gorgon's Gaze or Gorgon's Groove here as the round two. So again, it's really, really straightforward. This is a very, very nice rule book. This is an incredibly easy learn from rule book video. And I cannot, you know, shout that from the rooftops enough because so many games seem to have trouble with even just something as basic as that nowadays. So what are my final thoughts on this game? I like the base game. It was a top 10 game for me when it was released in 2022 as one of the biggest sleeper hits of the year for me easily from that aspect. This expansion just solidifies it as one of my favorite cooperative games in my collection, period. Right now, favorite cooperative games in my collection are like Spirit Island, they're like this, more recently Leviathan Wilds, Defenders of the Wild, Pandemic Iberia. This is right up there with it because Again, what I'm looking for is, is it tough? Is it giving me an equal shot to win? Is it hell of a lot of fun? Is it still giving me some thinkiness, but I love me a little bit of chaos at all the same time? And this checks all those boxes. And it's doing something different with the same formula. It's the same I go, game go, I go, game go formula, but it takes a spin on it as you being the defenders rather than the attackers. You being on your heels rather than being the aggressors of the crawl or the dungeon scene that we're used to. And so it is probably one of, if not the most underrated game in my collection, period. Boss Battles does nothing but solidify that. And truth be told, even if I don't want to play against the boss now, I want to play with the boss stuff because it's that much fun just to go out and just have a crazy, crazy effect with the combos that you can do with this. Again, it's gonna be a little bit slow. It could easily overstay its welcome if you have slower players around the table. I'm not sure I'd always wanna play it at four. I think three is probably my sweet spot. Two works just fine. Two is gonna be a little bit trickier if you've got some of these characters that only have you know one or two uh, you know presents on the board, but it's gonna work without any difficulty either from that standpoint. It's a little bit of a higher learning curve in terms of some of these mechanics and moving, but not that much of a step up from a pandemic style in the first place. Probably easier than say, like I mentioned, Defenders of the Wild. It's probably on par with Leviathan Wilds. And it's probably also going to be now on my top 10 of the year with this expansion just because I think it's that freaking good. Should you get it? Well, truth be told, you gotta like the base game. If you are a fan of hardish cooperative games that are doing something slightly different and you're okay with some of the randomization from the cards in the first place, I would argue this is on my short list of things for you to consider picking up. And I don't often recommend games from that side of things, right? I don't often say, hey, look, you should buy this game. 
But if you have tastes like I do, and any of those other games are slightly interesting to you, this one is more than worth your money from a base game standpoint as an aperitif, as a appetizer to wet your taste buds to figure out if you should be getting more. And it's one of those games where I'm very happy to have everything now from that aspect. So there you go. Keep the heroes out. Freaking amazing. Great game. I love it. And maybe you'll like it too. But it has to be right for you. So hopefully this is helpful in you figuring that out. There you go. Stay classy. Have a great freaking day. Subscribe? Question mark? That's all I got. Peace out. See you around.